Hi guys, Joss Allen from GAK.co.uk here. I am here with Monsieur Harry from the beautiful people of Positive Grid. Mm. Thank you for coming in and showing us your fine wares, sir. Sir, it's not a problem. So we are here today to do a product demonstration on said amplifier, the Positive Grid head unit. And as you can see to my left, we have the, um, the iPad hooked up as well to the amplifier so that we can delve in to each amp that we're going to check out and show you well we'll, we'll build some stuff or we'll, we'll, we'll mess around with some bits and we'll just we'll just see how it goes so harry mm. tell us what this is so this is a uh, essentially a digital replication of bias amp so we basically took bias amp professional the software that we've had out for years now and then put it into a head uh, 600 watt powered amplifier uh, all, all class d um it's incredibly light because of that and then put the most premium components the highest quality that we could um, okay. and when building it we didn't sacrifice quality for cost we yeah. just went straight for quality so what you basically have is the highest quality sound and best way to use bias amp okay. while using a 600 watt powered amplifier as well. It happened pretty quickly, didn't it? In terms of like, we're already seeing some unbelievably huge faces taking on, I mean, you said yourself that you gigged with just the, the bias software, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, so I, I took bias effects uh, to Reading and Leeds last year and just I used my bass um, and all I did I think I went through my iPad and then the iRig okay. stomp pedal yeah, and then yeah, into yeah. a DBX uh, 676 tube preamp and then just DI'd out to the desk Yeah. and I was this before I went for positive grid and I was just completely blown away by it. See that's how cool it is now we have a physical entity to take over those unbelievable tones that you could get from just the uh, the software mm, so, yeah. I, so that was the cool thing as i was saying we've already seen some unbelievably huge faces using um the head unit itself so um i guess tell us about the front panel because to someone that just likes to plug in and play this can be relatively daunting but the cool thing about it is pretty laid out in a pretty self-explanatory way, including the amp models and then everything else. So do you want to run us through the front panel? Yeah, so so you mentioned like the plug and play kind of thing. So there's there's a couple of aspects to that. And one of, you, like you said, it can be quite daunting, especially when you have as much versatility as what Bias Amp does. Yeah. The good news is, is that not only can you control everything from the front face that you would need to, so over here we've got your type uh, so you've got your bank and model basically and what we have here is uh, I think it's clean glassy blues crunch and metal and that's just a uh, not um, I'm trying to think of the best word is it like <laughs> an overall so no just a... it's not so it's not it's not specific to those banks so if you okay. wanted 25 presets of a high gain amp yeah. or something like yeah. that then you could have 25 presets of that just sure. different models of it so it's not dependent on what the bank is you yeah, can't yeah. have a high get you can have a clean amp in the metal section you can have sure, a metal amp sure. in the I guess this is more of a dictation for someone that just wants that amount yeah it's kind of an organization tool and also when it comes stock the presets that are in each one of those banks sure. are uh, according what to say. what they are yeah so then you've got five models in five different banks and then going over to the right hand side you've got the tube stages and then the distortion in those tube stages uh, as well as a bright switch as well. So you can just have it as a normal, you can have an added bright cap and a, okay. a bit more presence and boost into the, the preamp section. Um, and everything on here is CC controllable as well. So if you have an expression pedal um, or you have a MIDI controller or something like that in the studio or something, then you can actually dial that in to wherever you want as well. Okay. Then moving over, 
uh, you've got the, so that's preamp section, you then have the power amp section. So you have your topology, so you can go single-ended, split-load, push-pull, or solid state. So I know not, we were saying earlier, not yeah. a lot of people are really uh, too interested in solid state. I'll tell you what, anymore. Harry made the solid state joke earlier on, and because I was thinking in guitar world at that point of playing guitar, I was like, why? 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 <laughs> and it, everyone else is laughing, and I'm like, what, what, are you, what are you laughing at? But then I got it. I did get it in the end. To be fair though, you can get some, if you use a solid state, you can replicate some of the um, the really cool like 90s Randall sure. um, amps that you can get. and um, Pantera on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, like the Orange Crush series are actually remarkably good as well yeah. for being solid state. So you can get that sound. Just start dialing stuff like that. Mm. And um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people that are already aware of Bias Amp will know that you can actually amp match with the software. Okay. And the software comes included when you buy uh, the bias head. Yeah. So you can get home, you can activate your software, download it, plug in your head, any firmware updates or anything you need to, and then you can go onto the tone cloud, and that's where the plug and play aspect comes into it sure. again, because not only can you control the preamp, the power amp, um, and then just like a normal amp, you've got your normal controls here. Yeah. If you're not satisfied with the presets, so you have a stock or you um, are getting a little bit lost in your way and you've been there and dialing you know, for a couple of hours, yeah. I'm the kind of guy that'll tweak there for three hours sure. trying to get the perfect tone. Sure. Um, but if you wanted to go onto the tone cloud, we've got professional artists that make a bunch of tones. And then I think we've got uh, over 100,000 presets now on the tone cloud. Jesus. So you can, you know, there's, there's a massive amount library wise. Yeah. It's almost like going into a library and just kind of like seeing all the books and everything and going, I'll have that one. I'll go today. for that one, yeah. Yeah. And if you have a specific amp in mind, you can have a search bar at the top and just search for the amp that you want. Um, and, and you can, before you even download it to the head or to your software or anything, um, the guys over in RD and the guys who actually made the tone cloud, this is something really cool, which I think is. You know, pretty phenomenal is you can actually preview the amp. Okay. And um, when you have it plugged in via USB or, or you have it connected via Bluetooth, you just press preview and the preset will be beamed over to the head. And if you don't like it, you just click off the preview and you haven't had to download the preset. Yeah, you yeah. You haven't taken up space on your head, you haven't taken up space in your iPad or your your, yeah, your banks or anything and on the software and you can just go along and, and search for something else. If so you, you can to. have the ones that you actually want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a really good organization tool, yeah. especially, um, you know, one thing that's noticeable on this is that there isn't like um, a GUI actually on the head for okay. itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why we have the iPad is because you know, it's the biggest GUI you can find on a yeah. product for like, kind of like this. Yeah. Um, and especially when you've got it plugged in via PC or anything at all, and people are going to have specific, you know, presets that they use. I don't know, a lot of people that will go to a gig and will bring, I don't know, four or five heads with them yeah. or anything like that <laughs> at all. You're going to bring yeah, one yeah, head yeah, and have yeah. like clean and your yeah, three channels in that. Yeah. So if you, you can connect via a, a foot switch on the back, um, it's got two foot switch inputs, uh, one's an I2C and one's just a normal external pedal. Yeah. Um, and that's just a normal button foot latch. Um, and it's fully MIDI capable as well, so you've got in, out, and through. So now we know that this amp can do basically everything. <laughs> um, let's hear some stuff. Mm. Let's, um, let's check out some amps. So um, we've loaded up some presets, right? So we haven't actually... Mm done much to them apart from volume match them. Yeah, they're just stock presets that come with it. Okay, let me put down my tea. <laughs> and grab a guitar pick, and then we can get on it like a said car bonnet. So the first one we've got dialed in is what? So this is based on um, some of the classic kind of 90s clean vibes from um, like the high watt kind of amps that you yeah. get. Okay. Um, so this hasn't. This is none of these are amp match tones or anything at all. No. These are just presets that we've basically done by ear. Yeah. Um, sure. And I think there are a few that are amp matched um, that are on the tone card that are available that are positive grid made. Sure. Cool. Well, let's check it out. This is a Fender American Standard Strat. Um, Fender Custom Shop Fat Fifties pickups in this. So this is the this is the first one.
incredibly responsive, right? It just, it, mm. to every dynamic touch. So light to like heavy playing. So it really works well with the guitar and your fingers. It works well with your playing. As you were saying earlier, clean tones are always the hardest to get right, I think. Because you can get a decent overdrive sound out of, or a distortion sound if you're relatively good in post-production. Yeah. Most I mean, of the time. You've got, you've got plugins now. Um, like uh, one of my favorites in the studio is like FabFilter. Yeah. Um, there's the sand distortion plugin. You, sure. can, you can use that and just create your own distortion head from that alone yeah. by itself. Yeah. Um, with clean, not only is authenticating the actual tone and the sound of it and um, the warmth, especially from tubes. Yeah. I mean, this hasn't got anything in it. This is 100% solid state yeah. inside this. Um, one for um, to make it as clean as possible when authenticating different sounds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and two, also, it makes it incredibly light as well. It's, sure. uh, I think it's under seven kilos. So, it is light. Yeah, taking it to a gig is completely different Easy. from taking yeah. <laughs> you know, your standard massive 100 watt head. So the, the feel of it itself, it's 100% zero latency or as near to as possible. Um, and when rolling back as well, it responds like tubes would when you roll back the volume on your guitar. Yeah. The tubes almost don't heat as much sure. if, if that's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, the, to the amp to say isn't it. working as hard as it would be. Yeah. So cool. first, that's the first clean sound that we wanted to give a go so that is the uh the sort of based off a of high watts isn't it yeah so, um what's the next one we've got ready to go so this is a dumble if i'm correct yeah ah uh, yeah so a 67 dumble in clean and this is on our glassy setting so let's check this one out So I have never been fortunate enough to actually play a Dumble head, the the amp that lives in the world of bloody unicorns and such. That's I don't even know if it exists, they? but um, that sounds pretty bloody good to me. Um, I don't know what, you know, I've heard videos and stuff like that and bits and pieces of players like Robin Ford playing them and everything, but that... <laughs> Sounds pretty damn good. What's quite nice about the Dumble as well, this is probably my favorite preset um, that comes stock with them, but what's quite nice is when you dial up the distortion over yeah. on this side over here, it starts to um, kind of break up in that classic Dumble kind of sense. Like, obviously the volume increases the more tube stages you have. Sure. But you can actually dial in the amount of distortion in the preamp stage, either live or yeah. in the studio and kind of get that perfect dumble sound sure, that you want. Because sure. so many replications of it, like say there so are- So many now. It's yeah. like, it literally is like Stardust trying yeah. to find it. So yeah. yeah, so it kind of breaks up in that really kind of classic, I'm going to explode dumble way. Okay, let's check go. it out. So what you did is you cranked the, the, the preamp stage essentially, didn't you? Mm, yeah, so it's just the preamp stage for the distortion. Um, and as we go through, what I'll do is I'll add in another tube stage. Okay, cool. But keep it on the same amount of distortion. Yeah, cool. So let's give it a go.
it's literally that easy. And that was on one app, one setting that we were messing around with. So that is very, very cool. When you started to get that slight hair on the note, the breakup, mm. that was like perfect for me. You know, that um, just that slight breakup of the amp going, oh shit, no, no, no more. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's really cool. Especially with the Strat, it works really, really nicely. The fact that you got single chords works really nicely. Yeah, it does for that one. Yeah, yeah I think so. Cool. So that's one of the, that's the, the, two preset clean sounds on there. Let's move on to something else. Yeah, let's go for something that's a little bit more bluesy. Uh, so this is a uh, J45 um, basis for 63. Um, it's kind of based off of like a, a 63 Marshall. Okay, cool. Let's check that out. <laughs> That's, that's, amazing that's 100 percent my favorite so far that's it's little that, subtleties man. as well that you can dial in so this bright cap over here as you were playing a, a second ago as you add that and take it away that can be like kind of the defining point of your preset and of your yeah. time and especially when you when you can customize on the fly that easily when you rack up to a small venue compared to the large venue that you played the night before for instance yeah. and the bass is carried all the way to the back of the room but now you're in this small venue that's actually really well acoustically treated and you've got you know big curtains for yeah. instance over the walls or something all your high end is just going to be absorbed you yeah. just it's just going to be this muffled sound so adding a bright cap into that and just being able to flick a switch and all of a sudden you can hear your amp through and cutting through the mix live yeah that's a really really imperative thing especially for me as a, as a gigging artist sure. as well Let's do that again really quick. Let me go to the bridge pickup, something nice and bright, mm. and then you can see the real difference. So I'll just play this. So that's without and with. Big difference. Adds that bite that you know yeah. a Marshall usually has. Yeah, as well. exactly. Especially one of those old sort of single channel ones that are cranked as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like that plexi kind of bright, that harshness. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, should we move on to something that's a bit more crunch? Yep. So, this is a uh, Marshall again, uh, or based off of a Marshall, and this is again another 69, but it's the super lead channel of it, so it's okay. more of a JCM kind of 900 vibe. Cool, all right, let's give that a go. So I'll go to the bridge, because it's a bright pickup on the bridge, obviously, and I haven't got a humbucking guitar, I'm gonna dial back on the tone to about six, so it thickens it up a bit. <laughs> Definitely allows a strat to sound like a strat. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? It's got that hair that you yeah, mentioned definitely. as well when you get into that crunch section. Exactly, exactly. Again, Let's the, give the crunch a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. It, on the preamp stage it's quite interesting because obviously bef you've got four tubes on this, four valves yeah. on this preset. As you can see right here. And as you're going through it's, it's just a uh, 12 o'clock bias. Um, there isn't a huge amount of distortion. We've got three um, tube stages going on. What will be quite interesting is to add, you mentioned it's quite bright, so we'll add some yeah. warmth in via the master. Okay. Um, but instead of adding it via this master here, what we'll do is add in the distortion in the 
uh, power amp section here. Yeah. Then dial in how much of the power amp section we have compared to the preamp section. Okay. So then you can kind of get that muffled sound that you, you kind of get out yeah. of. Well, we've got EL34, so it's going to be bright either yes. way anyway. Yeah. So if we dial in some more distortion, whack that up, and then dial down the master a little bit, and then as you play, we'll get it to a nice part. Let's have a look. Again, that's another interesting thing as well. I was saying to you, we were out in the corridor earlier, and I mentioned that all of these are CC values as well. So you can go with an expression pedal all the way through the distortion on this one preset and start off a really nice clean kind of channel almost. Yeah. And then dial in with an expression pedal how much distortion you want going all the way to the top on three tube stages, even with the, the distortion on the power amp section, you know, nearly at full. Yeah. You still get that nice clean warm airy sound that yeah. you'd know. So this is so this is the So yeah, so that's the amp pretty dimed going a bit mental. So if I So yeah, the guitar cleans up really nicely when you back off on the volume as well, regardless of there is a lot of drive going on there. There's something also worth noting on, on more of the high gain settings is that there's a noise gate that's actually built in into the head as well. So by default, the custom dial over here is at the threshold, but the custom dial can actually be uh, allocated to anything that you like on here. Okay. So for instance, if we go to this, uh, oh, not that, not that. Have you ever tried to do something from the side and you can't? Like, <laughs> Especially with your, your middle finger, yeah, you're just constantly flipping me yeah. off throughout the whole bloody video. Yeah, it's going to be fisticuffs. <laughs> so let's go for... Let's go for the bias adjust for the preamp setting. Okay. So our threshold is, uh, is over here anyway, so we can take that all the way down and actually take the noise gate off and you can As hear. you can hear it, because as we said, there's a lot of drive and the... I believe the power amp or preamp stage, whichever one we adjusted, is working overtime. So yes, the yeah, the power amp stage. So you're going to get some I mean, fuzz kind yeah. of. Yeah, I mean, if you dimed a power, if you dimed the volume, the master volume on any amp, it's going to be sitting there humming. Yeah, you, you get self noise from exactly. anything that you, you use, but on the uh, preamp stage, you, everything on here is is latch adjustable as well. So over here, we've got the distortion. You can actually see as I move the dial, yeah, the distortion will moving. then move. So that's exactly the same. So you can see that the, the bias over here yep. is 12 o'clock, but our dial is pointing more at kind of 9 o'clock. Yeah. As you play, what I'll do is we'll go from all the way down to the opposite here. That's the bias. Yeah, yeah, there, of course. But, <laughs> but I'll uh, play, yeah? Mm. creating a hotter to slightly cooler sound, essentially. Yeah, it's, it, and f I guess for for anyone that's kind of watching this video as well, and, and like terminology as well, with it yeah. being hot and cold, it's more um, harsher distortion um, and warmth, okay. I guess, on, on the higher bias. Yeah. And then as you roll back, it's slightly, it gets cooler, it's, it's less, um, 
prominent harsh high end okay. on the, on the distortion. I sure. always think about distortion like grain of sand. Okay. So when when you go to the pr uh, the power amp section over here, for instance, you've got uh, splutter gain and power gain, and they are two different types of gain. I just I usually associate them so splutter gain being like big chunks of Hun Stanton kind okay. of grit kind okay, of thing, yeah, like you're yeah, treading yeah. over rocks kind of thing. And then power gain is that super saturated, um, really thin kind of almost like Spain okay. kind of like sand. Yeah, yeah. So you can get... We love Spanish sand. We do love Spanish sand. You get uh, two different types of distortion. So when dialing in a preset, especially something like a Marshall that's known for being more kind of it's always described as gritty. Yes. So yeah. that would be more the split again kind of thing where you get that typical kind of crunch value, especially on the old ones where you had the um, the diode um, in the preamp. Yeah. And you can add that diode and get that almost like a fuzz. Yeah, just almost. hear it. That's why they um, they you know, you get that that classic sort of um, it's a valve thicker, state, like, wasn't it? Yeah, like diode clipping overdrives yeah. and stuff like that. Well, you can actually on this you can actually swap out the preamps that you want and have this in the head as well. Jesus. So we would now have the diode going on over here. Good Lord. So if we have that on and we can dial that as far and as high as we like and you can see that's starting to get lighter and darker yeah. to let you know how much you've got going there as well yeah. as the distortion going through. So if we just have this completely flat, yeah. again it's at three, the distortion is not that much and I'll have the diode uh, clipping stage just at 12 o'clock as well. Okay. And then we'll just roll through the diode clipping stage and you can hear what a difference that makes as okay. well in the preamp. <laughs> When you have the capability of messing around with all the specific bits and pieces that you can mess around with an amplifier, it starts to put things into perspective in terms of pedals. Like yeah. the diode clipping thing. If someone doesn't understand the whole concept of diode clipping, it's right there for you to actually mess around with and understand yourself. It does become a good educational tool for those who are just getting into playing guitar as yeah. well. Yeah, cool. So did we have any other amp types that we wanted to check yes. out? Yes, so we've got one last one, which is the higher gain kind of stuff. Remember guys, I am using a Strat, so... This um, is a, Solan uh, a so Soldano. A, sol a Solandro. A Solandro Soldano. It sounds like someone's name. Hi, I'm Solandro. Cool. I always so think it sounds like a Mexican type of food. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, well, there is cilantro, isn't oh, there? Oh, that'd be why. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. That'd be why. Yeah. So, cool. <laughs> Put me to shame. There. It can definitely get there, man. That is, that is, um, that's a lot of drive on there, and um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm proud of my baby <laughs> that it can actually keep up. It's those custom shop Fat Fifties pickups. I swear down, Fender. Thank you. You should probably mention as well. There's no pedals. There's, yeah, I'm all. not using anything. This is going directly with my Fender cable. <laughs> going directly into the amplifier, no pedals or anything. We did try some pedals in front of it earlier, and once again, the clean channel works perfectly as a bridge for all your pedal needs. Um, we put some beautiful fuzzes in there, some overdrives and stuff, and it just sounded thick, dark, and creamy. So Something like worth it. mentioning on the pedals as well. Um, on the back of here, there's a, a send and return. 
So there's an effects loop. Mm, there is a, a effects loop as well with a, a ground lift switch yes. as well. And there's also two balanced and two unbalanced outputs, both with ground lift switch as well. So okay. you're never going to get any hum or horrible ground loop hum sure. um, that you might get, especially with bad power at a show. Yeah, yeah, you never know with power at a show. There's been many a time when my amp has just gone mm, uh, and failed on me. This, on that, has a five second startup time. In case, okay. that, in case that ever in happens. In case that happens. So if that you know you don't have to wait for it to load up, and again you don't need your iPad or anything with you. So if you have a power car or anything like that, and your drummer carries on, and then the power suddenly comes back on, as you all your head. So you can so you can continue playing. You can be like, right, I can trust in the product, and then it will just come back. back on. It will be in the same preset, the same settings that you had saved last time. That's amazing. Within five seconds. That's very very cool. It's a nice. It's comforting. It's yes, that it it live safety it is as a well. Live safety net. Yeah, exactly. We played we played live in Norwich. I can't even remember what the place was, but um, it was raining and uh, it was really really bad. We went on tour in April and um, there was a leak in the ceiling and on, I was actually on the stage and it was right next to where all the plugs were. Yeah. And as the water was coming through, there was a bunch of uh, bands that played before us. Uh, they were actually really good. Um, and the water came through and our guitarist went to go and plug in his pedal board and I had this with me. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was kind of banking that there was going to be a power cut or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And it made me even more nervous when our guitarist went to go and plug in his pedal board and electrocuted himself because of the water. So he and he shocked. was literally like this for the oh, entire yeah. time. He was <laughs> like, oh my God, kind of like shaking. Oh, so, no. I've seen some great videos of people like that. Did you ever see that video of that guy standing on a tree? Tom, actually, who's behind the camera, showed me this. And the guy's standing on the tree, and he's dancing with that broom, and the broom touches the thing, and he just stops. He's just like, la, la. And then he's just like, oh, my God. Can you imagine? I don't even want to. I don't even want to be in that process. You just, you've released. I know. You, yeah. <laughs> you Flatulence incarnate. <laughs> well, Harry. Mm. Thank you very much for coming down and talking to us about the positive grid head. You're very welcome. And showing us the capabilities that the iPad functionality has. I'm sure you'll probably do some more videos at one I'm point. I'm sure we'll do something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed um, the demonstration and the little chat between me and Harry to talk about this product. So thank you very much for watching.